Criminal justice reform is seen as a priority for the next legislative session as Oklahoma's prisons are bursting at the seams. Lawmakers, business professionals, and corrections officials are coming together to discuss the possible solutions. Even as voters and the legislature have previously passed various criminal justice reform measures, Oklahoma still has a major problem to address in curbing the number of people going behind bars. Unfortunately, the last couple of years, we've become known as the world's largest incarcerator of our citizens. Since the year 2000, the crime rate for the nation and Oklahoma have fallen. Yet Oklahoma has not seen the decrease within its prison population like other states. And Oklahoma's it crime rate is a little bit higher than the national crime rate. It's about 20% higher. It has been pretty steadily over that period. But um, Oklahoma's imprisonment rate is 78% higher than the national rate. So yes, there is a little bit more crime. That's not really explaining the, the large disparity in number of people who are imprisoned. Statistics also show that Oklahoma not only sends more people to prison, the state makes them stay longer. And you can see for violent crimes, it's not that different again about 20% longer in Oklahoma than the national average. Um, but for drug and property crimes, it's about 70 or 80% longer. The state has a lot to do to drop its prison population closer to the national incarceration rate. To reach the national average, we would have to reduce our prison population by 12,401 inmates. 12,401 from 27,000. Sustaining that level of incarceration is costing Oklahoma taxpayers millions of dollars. If we look at those costs year after year, it's $120 million every year. To put that in perspective, the legislature appropriated $517 million for the Department of Corrections for the current fiscal year. One of the main players in forming the next budget for DOC and other state agencies believes criminal justice reform should be made a priority. However, one of the biggest obstacles to reform, according to House Appropriations Budget Committee Chairman Roger Thompson, is the misinformation being spread about reform efforts. He feels all stakeholders should be at the table. And so if we can bring everybody to the table and begin to have a discussion and we can work together making sure that truth is not the first casualty that's going to be out there. Thompson said Oklahoma and its criminal justice system has a mental health resource problem. But today, in the Department of Corrections, over 50% of those that are incarcerated have some degree of mental illness. Bank First founder Gene Rainbolt serves as a board member of the Oklahomans for Criminal Justice Reform. He also views one of the biggest issues the Department of Corrections is dealing with is mental health. He suggests Oklahoma needs to separate those suffering with mental health issues from hardened criminals. If we don't do that, we are running in effect a felony factory in Oklahoma, causing generations to continue to be incarcerated. A piece of legislation which will be considered in the upcoming session is making state question 780 retroactive. It's the voter approved law which made simple drug possession a misdemeanor and pushed up the felony threshold for property crimes like simple theft. The thought is that making the law retroactive would relieve overcrowding in Oklahoma's prison system. Thompson feels that the discussion is a worthy one, but he sees it could be a difficult task if implemented. Can we through any particular system identify who is all in prison today on 780. I've got a series of numbers that I have received, but to really get down and dig down exactly those that are there on 780 crimes alone, while we can get close, we cannot nail that number completely down. It is well documented that people who have jobs after they leave prison will be less likely to return to prison. It also means that Oklahoma should try to remove barriers for those who are seeking an occupational license to obtain a good paying job or open his or her own business. We want to be able to tell people when they're coming home from prison to dream big. Um, but if many of the careers that they could strive for are going to prevent them from uh, participating when they finally finish their education, um, it's hindering them. Another aspect of criminal justice reform is curbing the number of people heading to prison. Even with recent reforms, the Criminal Justice Reform Committee projects DOC will need 3,819 beds over the next 10 years to handle the prison population. Another distinction there is it's not just 3,819 inmates, it's 3,819 beds through which many individuals will cycle over the next 10 years. The cost of this growth prohibits the Department of Corrections from focusing on rehabilitation. 
As far as the likelihood that the legislature will deliver criminal justice reforms to the governor's desk, it depends on who you ask. I don't see our legislature this session coming out with something will pass something, and if it is, I'll come back and tell everyone here I'm sorry. I don't see us having, seeing that happen, and it should. It is the right thing to do, it is the just thing to do. But the fact of what we're doing right now makes me very optimistic. You've got a wide spectrum of people here, all different backgrounds, recognizing we do have an issue. Um, not one simple solution is gonna fix the whole program. With several criminal justice reform measures introduced in the legislature for the upcoming session, time will only tell what kind of reform will be tried to slow Oklahoma's prison population growth.